In this week's Winners and Losers, we talk about monopol monopolies. <laughs> the latest sector that Amazon has put in jail, the shipping sector. Amazon announced it was getting into delivery of goods. Immediately, UPS and FedEx stocks crashed 5% on opening bell, or about $8 billion in market capitalization, continuing a pattern of cascading stock prices within hours of Amazon announcing interest in any given sector. Analysts claim the threat is overblown, pointing to UPS and FedEx complex infrastructure and that Amazon accounts for approximately just 5% of total revenue and pointing to all the CapEx expenses, about $5 billion each for FedEx and UPS in the most recent year. Last year, we correctly predicted that Amazon would get into this business. If Bezos tomorrow said, we see overnight delivery as a huge opportunity, the $150 billion in market cap of DHL, FedEx, and UPS would begin leaking to Amazon. Amazon claimed last year when they started leasing airplanes and buying tractor trailers that they were only supplementing holiday demand. Well, it appears that FedEx and UPS should get ready to be supplemented. It doesn't matter what the reality is. The perception that Amazon will win is a self-fulfilling prophecy as they will begin choking access to the mother's milk of business capital. Prediction, FedEx and UPS, regardless of the reality, will lose 20% of their value in the next six months and Amazon will increase its market cap by about $60 billion as analysts begin to sharpen their pencil and look at a new gangster in town in shipping, Amazon. Another player with billions of hotels on any property you might land on, Apple. Apple Music is now growing faster than Spotify. In the US, Apple Music is gaining subscribers at a rate of 5% per month versus Spotify's 2% growth. Spotify still has twice as many subscribers, but Apple has a built-in advantage as it comes preloaded on 1 billion iOS devices. I get in my car and Apple Music begins automatically playing. By the way, Apple has literally ruined YouTube for me. I can't turn that off. Apple takes a 30% cut of all subscriptions sold through its app store. Spotify decided to avoid the charge by preventing new customers from subscribing to Spotify Premium through the app store. Apple retaliated by blocking the Spotify update. When you're building a platform and you unfairly restrain the competition, that's direct evidence of monopoly abuse. What is the growth engine of our economy? Tech? Tax cuts? No, it's small business. If you look at the front page of any business section, however, or turn on CNBC, you'd think thousands of businesses were being formed every day and night by shiny grads from Berkeley, Stanford, and MIT, not to mention all the drop out starting billion dollar companies. But what's the reality? Startups are in free fall, specifically over the last four decades. New business formation has been cut in half. The number of public companies has also declined dramatically. Why? There's some macro reasons. People have more debt coming out of school because they have to pay to listen to this bull So they're less inclined to start a business. Maybe because of the housing crisis, they're less likely to move. However, we would argue that the real reason here is it's harder to get funding. Small businesses can't compete with big tech. When I'm in VC meetings, and I'm in a lot of them, budding entrepreneurs have to adopt a basic narrative, and that is we don't compete with Amazon, Apple, Facebook, or Google, but we make great acquisitions, which is effectively an oxymoron. So if there's a shot you'll be bought by an enormous company, you can raise billions at the same time as not compete with them. However, every other good idea raises zero. It has never been easier to be a billionaire and never been harder to be a millionaire. Under the category of strange bedfellows this morning, Ted Cruz, just that Ted Cruz, senator from Texas, referenced an article that we wrote in Esquire. How do we feel about it? Kind of like kissing our hot cousin, a mixture of very conflicted emotions, or better yet, some of the dreams I've been having about Magnum PI, specifically a physical encounter with Tom Selleck. Initially, a bit off-putting, but then I find I start to like it. And then he screams out, I'm Magnum 3.14, which really gets the ball rolling, if you know what I mean. We'll see you next week.